Okay, so today let's talk about methylene blue and its importance in medicine. And we have spoken about methylene blue uh, once before in regards to combining it with laser therapy for uh, the nervous system and brain and things like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and psychiatric issues. And so we're going to talk about that more today, as well as its utility in other areas of medicine, such as its original use as the best, and still is, the best anti-malarial drug on the planet since World War I. And also, it will be shown in this study that it's an excellent anti-candida or anti-fungal uh, strategy. So first of all, what is methylene blue? Methylene blue was uh, first created in 1876 by German chemist Heinrich Cairo, and it is blue dye. So if you wear blue jeans, you know what methylene blue is because it's turns your jeans blue or anything you have blue. Um, it's, it's probably dyed with methylene blue. And so, as you know, methylene blue is dark blue in color, but what's cool is it shows maximum absorption of, of 609 to 668 nanometer wavelengths of light, which falls within the red spectrum. So when we hear that and we think about combining laser with methylene blue, that, that makes sense because red light laser is in the 600 nanometer wavelength. So combining those two things is excellent for promoting energy production and mitochondrial health, as we've spoken about before and we'll speak about today. But yes, methylene blue uh, was used as an anti-malarial drug on the Western Front in World War I. And the soldiers, it, it, it was very effective, but one side effect that it has is it will turn the, your urine green. And so the, the soldiers, I don't know if they communicated that to the soldiers well, because there were complaints about that, but I've taken it myself personally, and I, I uh, also use it with my kids. And we like to laugh about, hey, was your pee green today? So it's benign, but it will turn your pee green. So let's focus in on the use here. Um, its usefulness in malaria is because malaria is caused by a parasite called, called Plasmodium falciparum. And what that parasite does is it, uh, it, it damages your red blood cells and your oxygen carrying capacity. And so what methylene blue does is go and interfere with Plasmodium's ability to make glutathione reductase which glutathione, you hear the word glutathione in there, glutathione is the body's master antioxidant. Glutathione reductase is one way that our body and plasmodium's bodies fights oxidative stress. Well, the interesting thing is here is that methylene blue will interfere with the parasite's ability to make glutathione, leading to uh, unsuccessful reproduction and death of that parasite, but it will not interfere with the human production of glutathione reductase. It actually augments our glutathione reductase production. So it's an it's a awesome double-edged sword, a beneficial edge for us, raising our antioxidant defenses, and a an disadvantageous edge for the parasites. Methylene blue is used in treatment of Alzheimer's disease and other neurodegenerative diseases. And the way it helps Alzheimer's is it breaks up um, accumulations of beta amyloid and tau proteins. So amyloid beta and tau protein are two proteins that aggregate or clump in the brain in Alzheimer's disease. And those clumps lead to, you know, neuron death and inability of those neurons and those areas, if the clumps get large enough of the brain to work properly, leading to the symptoms of Alzheimer's, such as uh, memory loss and coordination issues and whatever may show up depending on the parts of the brain impacted. So using methylene blue to prevent accumulation of those proteins helps prevent Alzheimer's disease. And if we want to dig into the details of methylene blue's usefulness in the nervous system even further here, we can zoom into this graphic 
A anything that causes mitochondrial dysfunction is going to be bad for us, okay? Because remember, mitochondria make ATP for us, which is energy, and that energy is required for us to function, whether that's, you know, to digest our food or have an immune system that fights enemies or to turn over, you know, unhealthy cells and create new cells. We require energy to do all that, and mitochondria produce that energy. So mitochondrial dysfunction is behind uh, much chronic disease, if not all chronic disease. So you can see when we have dysfunctional mitochondria, that leads to increased reactive oxygen species or free radical formation, which causes oxidative damage or rust, as I like to refer to it. And that rust in the brain causes neuron death. Also mitochondrial dysfunction will cause mitochondrial membrane permeability failure, which leads to reduced energy production, or ATP. And it also causes decline in complex four of the electron transport chain, which is a part of the ATP energy production. So again, if we don't have enough energy, our brain can't function well and our neurons die. When our neurons die inappropriately, that can promote Parkinson's disease, ischemic brain injury, uh, like stroke would, ischemic stroke would be one example, traumatic brain injury, Alzheimer's disease. Okay, so depending on where in the brain and the individual, you might develop Alzheimer's, you might develop Parkinson's, or if you have a, a, a brain injury from stroke or a traumatic brain injury like concussion or uh, the like, then that can drive neuron de death via mitochondrial dysfunction. So, also, gliosis is inflammation of the glia or su supporting uh, cells to nerves in the brain. And if those things are, uh, say, uh, ramified, that leads to neuroinflammation. And neuroinflammation blocks healthy ner nerves, healthy neurogenesis or nerve production. And so, again, we don't want that dysfunctional mitochondria, no matter what the cause. Well, one thing we can do to prevent dysfunctional mitochondria is use methylene blue. So you can see here, methylene blue blocks or prevents mitochondrial dysfunction, blocks or prevents gliosis and associated neuroinflammation. Methylene blue promotes growth of neurites and neurite outgrowth helps connect nerves together and promote neurogenesis and healthy nerves. And methylene blue promotes synaptogenesis, so connection of synapses and neural pathways, again, promoting neurogenesis. And healthy nerves inhibit the development of unhealthy brain and unhealthy neuro disease. So if we use methylene blue to promote healthy energy production in the brain, anti-inflammatory effects, prevention of tau tangles and beta amyloid accumulation in Alzheimer's. We are promoting not only prevention of disease, but also what you see here, improvement of neuron function and growth. So as we go further down here, again, more specific to Alzheimer's, the brain is dependent on energy, and it uses 20% of the body's glucose and 20% of the body's oxygen at rest. So that means if you have any issue with delivering oxygen, like poor circulation, poor blood pressure, low iron status, anemia, right? Then that oxygen doesn't feed into the mitochondria and the electron transport chain and provide energy for us. If you have issues with delivering sugar to the brain, same idea, that can promote neuroinflammation, neurodegeneration, because Sugar is efficient for neurons. So if you have diabetes or insulin resistance, um, Alzheimer's in some circles is known as type 3 diabetes or insulin resistance of the brain. So we must be promoting healthy sugar utilization and healthy oxygenation of the brain. And from the oxygenation standpoint, methylene blue plays a big role there. In terms of 
Uh, if we look at this here, methylene blue is the first chemical that can cross the blood-brain barrier and induce the mitochondrial respiratory complex. Methylene blue applied in low doses exhibits strong antioxidant properties, and its oxidized and reduced forms are balanced in low concentrations. So as a strong antioxidant, it prevents rust in the brain. Methylene blue prevents aging and neurodegeneration by affecting mitochondria through its cycling between oxidized and reduced forms. By penetrating cellular and mitochondria membranes, methylene blue aggregates in the mitochondria and increases uh, transfer of electrons to oxygen or energy production. Methylene blue um, also increases production of cytochrome C oxidase itself. So not only is it promoting better mitochondrial function, but by promoting production of cytochrome C oxidase, uh, you're creating more ATP factories or more energy factories. And then from a candida perspective, the way it functions is regardless of where the candida infection is in the body, which this these authors do a good job of pointing out, can occur anywhere you have a medical implant. Okay, so a dental plaque, a skin infection, an orthopedic implant, a wound infection, a fake hip, a pacemaker. Okay, all these different things, stents. Okay, ear infections. Candida can develop and often do, especially in the medical implant areas because they produce biofilm on those things. And the biofilm, as we've talked about in the past, protects them from the immune system seeing them and eliminating them. While the way that methylene blue helps clear candida infections is by breaking down that biofilm and killing the candida. So uh, you can see here in candidiasis, methylene blue reduces infection by causing mitochondrial dysfunction in the yeast. So again, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. It promotes mitochondrial health in us, but mitochondrial dysfunction in the enemy. It promotes glutathione production in us, but disrupts glutathione production in the enemy. So it is a very um, interesting molecule and useful across many different uh, illnesses and issues. So how do you dose it? Well, dosing changes depending on, you know, there's there's broad range of dosing depending on what you're trying to do. And because I don't know who's watching this video and I'm not your doctor, I'm not going to give you any specific dosing. But the research generally suggests that it's safe to use at 0.5 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. And, and you go up from there depending on what's going on. It's safe for just about everybody. If you are someone that has a G6PD mutation, then it is not safe for you if that mutation is being expressed. And so you would need to have a, a, a simple blood test for that. It's about $6 um, ish, depending on you know, who's running it. But you, you'd run a test for your G6PD levels. And if uh, they're all good, then you're all good to take methylene blue. And most people will be that way. So have your doctor run your G6PD if you're interested in using methylene blue. And if it's good, then you are good to go. So as I said, I've used this myself and with my family. And um, typically the only side effect that you'll notice is green urine. So let's open this up for questions. Dr. Bartimus, yeah. what, uh, which form does it come in? Is it a pill? Well, it's in all kinds of forms now because uh, companies are are more onto it. Uh, the best way to dose it up would be liquid, in my opinion, because then you know the, the liquid forms vary too. But uh, oftentimes they're they're like a half milligram per drop. So then you know you know you just multiply your drops times what you need. And while while we're on this topic, let me just say that. It's important when when you're looking at methylene blue that there's there's lots of different kinds, but you want pharmaceutical grade, USP pharmaceutical grade, okay? 
because that is what can be used for human use. There's, there's, if it's not USP pharmaceutical grade, then it can have contaminants that can be uh, unhealthy and dangerous for us. So if you were to use it, make sure it's USP pharmaceutical grade methylene blue. So how do you know if you need it? Um, well, if you're, I mean, the first thing would be if you have any of these issues that we discuss here. So any type of mitochondrial dysfunction, if your family has neurodegeneration. So for example, my family, uh, on one side, there's a lot of neurodegeneration, there's Parkinson's, there's dementia. And so, you know, wow. for me, I, I'd like to um, protect myself, you know, prophylactically and say, let's not let my brain get there to the best of my ability. So, you know, that that's a big trigger for me, but also for you know, for energy, we all could use energy, right? And we all have mitochondria. Also, we're all aging. And as we age, our mitochondria become less healthy. So if we jump over to this study and we look down here, as we age, right, all of these things conspire against us. We're surrounded by by rust-inducing things. Um, we could have inflammation of the brain for many reasons. We can have lots of things that, that interfere with our mitochondrial health as we talked about. So just aging itself, a few videos ago, we talked about inflammaging. Remember that? And inflammaging is the physiologic aging that happened or the inflammation that happens physiologically as we age. But then if we pile on top of that, now we're adding inflammation that is not physiologic and that's something that we could avoid. If you're breathing, you're aging. So on some level, we could use it. Athletes, would it be safe for someone with a liver disease? Um, as as far as I as far as I've read, so you just if that you want to make sure that person doesn't have a G6PD deficiency. But um, if they don't, then um, what I've read says you're healthy. You know, but again, that's the caveat is. I don't know that uh, I don't know that person unless unless I'm your doctor, then don't take that as you're safe to do it. Um, you know, do your own research, speak with your doctors and, uh, you know, do your due diligence there. If we just think through it mechanistically, the liver is working to detoxify all the toxic things we're exposed to. And, um, you know, inflammation, oxidative stress from the body as well. So, the liver requires a lot of glutathione. And we've sp spoken on other videos how glutathione declines as we age and our ability to produce it declines as we age. So what did we say earlier? Methylene blue promotes glutathione reductase production, helping our glutathione levels. Liver needs a lot of glutathione to do its job. So it would appear that, you know, if we go through that deduction, that methylene blue would be helpful for liver issues in general.